I almost just forgot to start recording. Oh my God. Um, yeah, this week we're going to be talking about karate combat. Um, Hedera won a kind of cool community competition. I think it's like the second time that they've won it. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, blah, 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 some other, other notes. Kabila, Hashinals, Metaverse stuff, VR Jam. Um, yeah, it's some new, some new stuff. One of the items that was published today was um, something in regards to a new DAO platform from Swirls. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, Lehman, there, there was a very interesting, uh, not post, but like something shared from Lehman, which was, I found really interesting. Um, other DAO stuff. And also, too, uh, pet photos. I'm excited to look through a bunch of pet photos. Um, there's a thread pinned to the top of the spaces, and we're going to look at those. Figured it was a good move to as a little palate cleanser. I'm just getting set here. We're going to start in just a minute. Feel free to share the spaces. The more, the merrier. We're going to get started in just a minute here. Um, okay. Also, too, you know, the other thing is like just overall, just before we get started is like, you know, the ecosystem right now, and we talk about it a lot, but something this ecosystem is needed. And maybe I'm trying to look at the silver lining or the or the positive stuff. Um, you know, I think that there's been a lot of stuff this week. It's been it's taken a lot of energy. This has been definitely a, uh, a high bandwidth week in the Hedera ecosystem. But, you know, the good and the bad, um, you know, I think that it's, it, it's, it's energy, you know, that it, you can't say that the Hedera ecosystem and community is not, you know, energetic right now. And I think that's that largely, I think that's a good thing. And I think that, you know, most of the troubles and drama and whatever it might be is, you know, I, I think it's a product of just coming out of a bear market. People are burnt out. People are, um, quite feral. So I think that we're going through a little bit of, um, an adjustment period. I think we're going to talk about a bunch of it. Um, I think there's a, some stuff on everyone's mind, but let's, without further ado, let's dive into it guys. And we're live. You're listening to the Hashgraph Enthusiast Show. Hosted by Brandon Davenport, a.k.a. It's Brandon D. Let's go. It is Wednesday, April 10th, noon, Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, GM. Good afternoon. Good day. Um, got a lot to talk about. Um, the other thing too is like, what was I going to say? I can't remember what I was going to say. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, one thing coming into the show that, uh, <laughs> kind of, and again, this show is called, should we be thinking bigger part three? Um, and I call we're in a little bit of a saga right now. It all started with the... Um, what, what I think has kind of rippled through the ecosystem a bit, which was, you know, a, you know, trusted, um, you know, a trusted source in the ecosystem that's high up sharing info with me. And at this point, I think people have, you know, taken away from that, that April is supposed to be an exciting month. We're getting to the halfway point in April. There's some monster use cases coming in quarter three, blah, blah, blah. So I think that a lot of people that, that show was from late March. Um, and I think that a lot of people kind of run with that <clears throat> and we talk, that, you know, and when you put stuff out there like that, and I'd encourage people to go back and watch episode, um, 118 <clears throat> for that. There's some clips too, some clips and highlights, but, um, really kind of when you put stuff out there like that, it starts to echo back in the community and there's like some Reddit posts. There's some great, um, X threads, like all these different types of things. And I'm just kind of following up with stuff because, um, you know, some people are connecting some dots. Some people are, uh, you know, finding some breadcrumbs. And 
that's exciting stuff. That's cool stuff. There's also some bummer stuff that we'll talk about, but it is what it is. Um, the first, <laughs> the first bummer thing I want to talk about was tweeted out by um, uh, good pal uh, King Solomon, H Bar H Barbarian, if I do say so myself. Tweeted out um, <laughs> the fact that dog with hat that token right the token of uh the guy on stage you know in a k-hole that token that dog token has passed the market cap of hedera it is now ranked number 38 on coin market cap and hedera is slowly slipping into the top 40 now again that's not that's not to say like, oh no, what's going on with Hedera, you know? It, it's more just like, this is what's happening with the market right now. Everything is kind of flipping and flopping and stuff's moving around. So I think that, again, transitioning from a bear market, but uh, yeah, a little bit of an update there. Dog with hat. Um, <laughs> missed the boat on that one, I guess. Uh, I remember too, like this is one of those things as well where, um, you know, everybody, I remember last year, everybody was talking about like this this next bull run this one's going to be the utility bull run right this one's going to be the bull run that's driven by utility tokens of real world stuff um and you know i think that right now it's, it's clearly the meta is meme coins and it's so good like here's one thing is it's so good to see um you know hedera really embracing meme coin stuff. I think that if you were to flip back early last year, it was like a lot of, a lot of higher ups in those organizations were not kind of clued into meme coins or just not on their radar. But I think that the community has done a really good job of highlighting that stuff. And it's just so cool to see like the foundation, Hedera, all that kind of stuff, really kind of embracing that. I think there's learning all around. And I think also, too, for a lot of people in the Hedera ecosystem in general, meme coins are kind of a, a new thing. I mean, DeFi is kind of a new thing. Um, so it's good to see, you know, embracing that kind of stuff and very clear um, that if that had not happened, we'd be in a pretty weird place right now. So good call on the community, good call on Hedera, diving in and embracing it. I think that the meme coin wave that kind of got kicked off on Hedera last year was a very good thing. And, you know, still some, still some work to do, but it's clear meme coins are not going away. Um, dog with hat shout out or dog with cap or whatever it is. Shout out. Um, <laughs> don't know what else to say about that. Um, now on Hedera, there's not just meme coins. Of course, there's also, you know, utility tokens and project tokens. Um, more than I think a lot of people know or like pay attention to. Um, and one of those is Karate Combat. You know, Karate Combat is a project that I've, you know, watched a lot, um, kind of develop over the last year and a half. And, you know, for me, it's like personally, it's like I, I've never watched UFC. I'm, I'm just not into it. It's just not my vibe. I'm not a, you know, I'm not an incredibly athletic fit person. It's just not my kind of thing. But I mean, you have to be pretty like ignorant to not understand that, you know, sports are really going through a major renaissance right now. And if we talk about, you know, um, the intersection of DLT and uh, retail and, uh, you know, mass adoption, all that kind of stuff, it's like this is a vertical where you have to be. It's similar to gaming in Web3, right? I think a lot of people fade gaming in Web3 too. And so Karate Combat um, has just kind of, you know, really been experiencing a lot of a lot of growth substantial growth right not these kind of vanity metrics um real butts and seats um real fighters we talked last week about you know may from hash pack is going to be at karate combat um and twice now they've had kind of representatives from karate combat on the joe rogan show i want to watch this clip just because um again whether you whether you dig fighting or not whether you like joe rogan or not um what matters is if you're interested in adoption of DLT, most, more specifically adoption of Hedera as a network for retail, you got to pay attention to this. I'm not saying join the Karate Project or invest in the Karate Token. What I'm saying is pay attention. 
um, invest your attention in this project is what I'll say. Um, especially if you're working on your own project. These guys are doing a really good job. Uh, check out this clip from the Joe Rogan Show. At the next Karate Combat, Joe Schilling and Luke Rockhold Ooh, taking a year. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Yeah, actually, when is yeah. that happening? Uh, April 20th. Oh, shit. Yeah, so I, that's I, interesting. I'm, yeah, so y'all could check Joe me out a there. Bad yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. So, the, you know, that is... You know, for folks watching the video version, and I will be, you know, live streaming this show on YouTube and X in the future, so you will not be just looking at this horrible camera angle. You'll actually see my computer screen, but that's a guy with a karate combat shirt talking to Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan show. Like, if that's not exposure, I don't know what is. And, you know, if we have people like Joe Rogan showing up for fights for karate combat, it's like, that's great. Again, who cares what you think about this stuff? I mean, this is a real project doing real stuff. So um, I dig it. Also, too, this is something I love to see, um, and I think I have an idea about what unfolded here, um, but this was really great. So, also, too, on the Karate Combat stuff, I got to say shout out H-Bar Bull listening right now. I mean, H-Bar Bull, I think, has really been one of the early advocates of, of Karate Combat, and I mean, that's a that's a winner. So, I think that watching H-Bar Bull's show and stuff like that has been good to keep up with that project. Um, now... Check this out. It is the ultimate crypto tournament. Um, congratulations to two-time defending champion Hedera. So um, the official ultimate crypto tournament um, <laughs> with uh, 3,800 followers on Twitter, whatever this is, um, is a great example of how I think certain marketing and branding opportunities can be overlooked in Web3. I think that a traditional... Um, enterprise or organization or business will go like, oh, so there's this, you know, sub 5,000 follower, um, you know, X account doing some rinky dink, uh, you know, um, contest between networks, whatever. Um, and this stuff matters. I mean, even if it's kind of dumb, it does matter. People do want to see the strength of communities. And when there's a Twitter poll and you have like Hedera and other networks, it, the results of that Twitter poll do matter to people. It's dumb. It, what we're learning here is a lot of dumb things are very important in crypto. This is one of those dumb things. And um, we did it. And it was crazy because, I mean, I was tweeting about this, but, um, or what, we, what do we call it? Zeding. I don't know what we call it. But anyways, um, there was the poll. Hedera was up against uh, the Theta Network. And Hedera was losing. It was kind of like this Twitter poll thing. And at the last minute, um, you know, Hedera kind of came up, took the win. And this happened. La this happened last time with this contest. And I got to give a shout out to um, Credible Crypto on uh, on X. He does this with with these all the time. When Hedera makes it to the end of these of of this little contest, um, in the last hours, when Hedera is usually behind, um, in in kind of like the uh, the, the final running, the final showdown, um, credible crypto and his like hundreds of thousands of followers. He'll just tweet it out. And so last year we saw the same thing. Hedera was losing and then boom, made a comeback. So I think that's what happened this year again was credible crypto tweeting it out, uh, rounding up the H barbarian. So shout out to credible crypto. Um, that was cool to see. Also the Hitachi note is online. Um, new governing council member Hitachi. Everyone was stoked. Um, their node is now online and showing correctly on hash scan. People are staking H bar to Hitachi node. Um, so if you are a Hitachi enthusiast, a Hitachi America enthusiast, the node is online. Stake your H bar. Um, Kabila launched, uh, <laughs> really did really made some big moves this week and last week, um, with the launch of, Secondary marketplace. They did some other updates too, but I think this is the most substantial thing, right? We've got, you know, a secondary marketplace. It's also got Hashinal support. Um, so, you know, yet another marketplace I think people are using. I tested it out. Great user experience. Um, and again, Kabila really just kind of branching out into all different verticals, um, taking that kind of, uh, you know, all in one uh, ecosystem type of approach. Um, I think, you know, so, somewhat different than some other projects, um, fresh and they're clearly executing. So shout out to, um, Cabilla on the marketplace launch. I think that's fantastic. Um, also too, 
something else that was published just before the show um, that I have like it, it got published literally just before the show. I haven't had a chance to read it, but I wanted to highlight it just because I think it's important. Um, now, Manny Rubin, the chief policy officer at Hedera, um, talking about metaverse, um, the World Economic Forum, um, and the Identity Report, um, and Hedera's contributions. So there's kind of this global effort for effectively a passport for the metaverse. And Lehman talks about this too. Like years ago, Lehman would talk about the metaverse and kind of what that intersection of, you know, the metaverse and DLTs would be. And, you know, making a great point that, that you know, you have, we have a built in trust mechanism in the real world, you know, being able to under know that you're seeing the actual person that you're seeing, or if you both look at a chair in the corner, you can trust that you're both seeing the same thing. So in the real world, we have these built in trust mechanisms. Uh, if you're seeing someone in front of you, you know, it's them, et cetera. In the metaverse, you kind of have to augment those. And so it's, 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 it's great to see Hedera kind of at the table, um, driving these initiatives when it comes to, you know, metaverse passports, all those different types of things. And I think that, um, you know, for me, uh, I'm going to look into this a little more again, it just got published. So I didn't have a chance, but Charles Atkins, president of Hedera put out, I think, um, a pretty good breakdown. Um, and basically what Charles says, referencing this article from the mini Rubin, um, on the Hedera blog, um, why does this matter? And Charles outlines, um, in the metaverse, who we are goes beyond the physical, opening up new ways to express and connect. What does that mean for you? We should have the ability to access a world of experiences with a unique digital identity. Um, representation and inclusivity are not afterthoughts. They're foundational. And, and he's touching on a few topics that have been talked about quite a few times, um, talking about, you know, an identity, you know, someone being able to have multiple identities, right? Like, for example, if I'm interfacing and also identity, like what is a metaverse, right? A metaverse is a virtual world or maybe a metaverse is a market or who knows what, a, what, how we define metaverse. But the point being is, you know, this is about identity and someone being able to have, you know, multiple identities and manage those. I don't want to use the same identity with my bank that I might use in a game or something. So, um, I mean, this touches on a larger discussion that we've hit on on the show many times, but I think the thing here is like, I want to take this away. Um, and I want to, uh, dive into it a little more. I think that it's important. Um, as we, cause, cause again, like in our next story, we're going to talk about, um, uh, VR jam, but the topic of metaverse, I think that the, the metaverse brand, it was really crazy back in, let's say, um, you know, 2021, 2022, I think that metaverse was the buzzword. That's what it was all about. The promise of metaverse was so amazing. Um, and you know, I think that it's not that that stuff isn't true. It's just that it's that cycle of technology, right? It's the hype cycle. Like, have you seen any people wearing vision pros on your timeline? Right. Or have you seen any people with cyber trucks or whatever? It's like, no, not really. It's like the hype cycle has passed. And now we're going to see if, um, you know, if those, th those take root, right. If those product categories end up working out, same with, same with the metaverse stuff. It's like, we're still trying to figure out what is a metaverse. Um, and what is that all about? So I think that overall, I think that it's going to be a major pillar of just technology in general, this idea of another universe, um, that offers us kind of a reflection um, into ourselves. I think that's going to be important. But again, I think it's going to be a little bit of time to get there and the road will be lined with a bunch of um, riffraff. Um, and real quick, just to preface this, you know, I don't necessarily, I, I spoke about, um, you know, VR Jam on the last episode. They reached out to me. They want to be on the show. Um and I mean, you know, I think that, it, you know, I get reached out to by a lot of different projects um, that want to come on the show to, you know, tell a story um, or promote a project or, you know, all, all sorts of different things. And I think that, you know, I always try to remind myself with this show, something that I try to do is I want as best I can to just kind of reflect what's happening in the ecosystem, kind of like um, uh, regurgitate what's happening in the community and, and less, 
less kind of like, um, you know, spin narratives or, or different things like that. So I think, and I, not to paint it in a negative light, but there's different purposes for different shows. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, there's so many shows in the crypto space that are, and so many, so many, um, X spaces and so many different, um, outlets like that, that are for, you know, promoting a project and all those different types of things. And they're great because, um, oftentimes, you know, th- those shows do a great job of vetting, pr- uh, projects and, those shows are how I figure out like what to pay attention to what's going on. But for my show, it's like, um, it's not something I'm especially good at. I don't think. And, you know, I, with this show, I have more fun just kind of, uh, you know, riffing and it's, it's a live show. Um, so it doesn't lend itself so much to like prepared stuff. Um, but anyways, I have projects reach out to me all the time. Um, and, VR jam reached out and it's tough because, you know, I hadn't really like clued into the project too much. I didn't know a ton about it. All I really saw, um, about VR jam was, um, you know, kind of like a little, like a little bit of a failed launch. And I wouldn't say, and I don't say failed launch. Like, um, yeah, I think that people talk often about like the tokenomics or the plan or the strategy or the, whatever it is. Um, to me, it's like, you know, I don't necessarily like having a, trying to launch an initiative and having it not work i don't really deem that a failure i mean this is web three there there's there's always like a high chance of something that you try to do just not working out it is the way it is we see it all the time even from established projects that that launch stuff um that just go sideways or something like that like we saw that with the hash pack i know it's like you you go you have a little issue people get upset but what really matters to me is you know, what's the response, listening, moving through it, getting past it. I, I talk on the show a lot of times about, um, you know, I usually judge projects when they're just not having a great time or when they fail because it's an opportunity to see the character of a project. Um, and I mean, the, the pathway to success is lined with, is lined with failure. It's like, you got to just fail fast. And it's, there's so many incredible projects in the ecosystem that have failed and moved through it and, you know, gotten better. It's like, think about all the NFT projects that have just had mints that have just been infuriatingly bad and very high profile. And we're talking hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of liquidity Um, and those projects are able to navigate those situations, keep a community under control, move through it. Um, so, you know, I think that that's something that's really important to, to take into account. And so for me, the whole VR jam thing, again, like I didn't know a ton about the project. I don't want to talk about, um, you know, whatever it may be like the ins and outs and specifics of the the tokenomics or how everything went down or whatever. It's more so about like, how does a project deal with, um, you know, you know, a failure. And then also to really examining the, the, the Hedera community um, in the moment too, and kind of, you know, be a little bit surprised at, you know, some of the stuff that goes down because the other side to it is like, we do want to have an ecosystem that's attractive to build in. Um, so it's just one of those difficult, messy situations. And to be honest, um, I didn't really want to talk about it. I talked about it last week, but um, if you want to go in depth to it, listen to H Bar Bulls Spaces yesterday. He had the VR Jam guys up there, um, and I think that you know to set the stage. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'm just going to play a quick clip from the Spaces and just kind of start there, um, and then I don't want to I don't want to you know hit on this for too long, but. Um, let's just listen to a quick clip to just kind of set the tone and kind of see what can happen with a lack of experience um, in in Web3. This is what people are up in arms about. I, I don't actually comprehend why there is such vitriol and anger here from so many people. We're talking about such insignificant amounts of money. This is just very minor um, adjustment padding around the top and bottom price at, at the beginning, that right at the very start. And then after that, just us putting little small amounts of our own money on the market to create an orderly trading environment and to do a little bit of price support. This is exactly what Web3 projects, high quality ones, 
all over the world do every day of the week. <laughs> We're very transparent and open about what we do because we believe that's the best way to do business. Um, and perhaps we should be a little bit more cloak and dagger about what we do here. And perhaps we shouldn't have been as open and honest as everybody is as we were. <laughs> so that, that was kind of a little bit shocking to me because, you know, on the onset, it's like basically what I was watching was like, okay, here we go. You know, a project comes in, they're inexperienced. They don't really have, um, you know, well thought out strategy. They do a little thing. It's a failure, but it's like, what was it? It was like, you know, there's a liquidity pool of like 25K or something. It's like, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and there's all this kind of back and forth. And what I saw started to take place, what that I've seen happen so many times in the startup space that I, you know, that people should probably be familiar with is, kind of like this Barbara Streisand effect, right? So the Barbara Streisand effect describes how attempting to hide or censor information can inadvertently cause it to gain more public attention, right? So this origin originated from a 2003 incident where Streisand sued to remove photos of her home, but the lawsuit increased interest and spread of the images. So it was weird to me when I was like, oh, it's this, you know, you know, misstep from a project, whatever it is. Um, and just kind of in that clip there, you know, the representative of the project saying that, you know, an alternative would be being less transparent or cloak and dagger or whatever. And that's kind of weird to say um, on a public forum. And I think that's kind of what that Barbara Streisand effect is, is it's like, I saw that they had, you know, shut down their discord and disabled comments and these types of things. Um, and I mean, again, you know, their situation, I think, is they're super stressed and overwhelmed. and But that's kind of what can happen is if you start to really spin things down, it just creates this situation um, where stuff just gets, you know, a little bit wild. And for me, I think that a, you know, projects community definitely reflects the temperament of the founders. And so I think that under stress and pressure, um, you know, it's definitely a little bit surprising um, to hear that over something like really not that, that big of a deal. Um, so again, go check out that spaces. I think it was, um, th there's some good info shared as well I got a better understanding of the project, but I think that it, to me, it was just a signal of like something, something's not quite right. And for me, I think that it definitely is an outlier, right? I think that, you know, the way that VR jam is handling stuff is definitely kind of, um, just very, di very different. Um, we've seen a few projects do stuff like this, but this is like, you know, definitely an outlier and one to just kind of, it's kind of like a case study in a little bit, a little bit of a way. Um, so for me, you know, I think that this is really just a lack of experience, um, putting profit before customers, not really having a clear value proposition and just a lack of planning. Right. And, you know, I think that to be honest, many of us are guilty of that in our past in, you know, in, in work, um, maybe early projects we've had, it's just, it just comes with, it comes with the territory and you kind of have to, you know, take your lumps with it. But I think that, um, in this case, there was just, it, it felt like there was a, just an element of like maybe some outside investors or whatever it might be. Maybe it's a little over leveraged, but whatever the case is, um, I think that, you know, and people say this in the space a lot, but I think it is, you know, it would be a good idea to zoom out a little bit. Um, you know what I mean? I think that really what we're talking about is a pretty small failure from a really kind of tiny project. Um, and, and it's, and for some reason it's kind of feeling outsized. And I think that stuff like this, I think that in this case, it's, it's best to just fade into the background and go back to the drawing board and, um, not necessarily kind of, keep forcing, um, you know, a project like this into the limelight. You know, I think that there's definitely work they got to do. Um, and you know, I, I just like, because of the spaces, you know, hearing kind of what was going down and kind of thinking of it after the fact, um, I just saw this, like I said, as kind of like a little bit of a case study, a little bit of a learning opportunity for myself. Um, and then maybe kind of passing some of that on. So I think that when it comes to like the VR jam, area or side of things um and it kind of speaking to vr jam it's kind of like i it's it really you know time to go back to the drawing board um 
and it, and it's, you know, things definitely feel a little bit over leveraged. Um, and it's, it's, we say this to, you know, projects really need to understand that it's, it's important to know the market, right? Especially if you're going to be, um, looking for funding or support from directly from the market and knowing that like, you know, Hedera is a, you know, relatively small market. You know what I mean? There isn't a ton of value to extract. Um, so sometimes with projects, if, if their only hope or if their only, um, avenue is to, you know, do a mint or a drop or a token airdrop or, um, ICO or whatever it may be for this small community, you know, I think that you really have, and I think in the spaces, you know, DH bar bull hit this really well is it's so important to spend that time, you know, that six months to a year even of embedding in the community, getting to know people, um, investing in other projects, those different types of things. And that's the winning strategy that we've seen so many projects do. Um, now I think that for me, again, just looking at this kind of like a case study, it's, it, it is really kind of clear, you know, the, the manipulative nature of it. I, again, when, when I saw that kind of, again, we'll call it, you know, a failed token launch or whatever. Um, I think what really set people off is like that tweet that came out where they were like, this was an ultra successful token launch. It's like, well, no, it's not. And I think that's where you lost a lot of people. Um, because again, failure is an opportunity to, you know, really kind of move forward and, and galvanize your community um, and fix, fix the strategy or go back to the drawing board or whatever. Um, and, you know, that's how many projects build build trust. Again, so many projects have had um, really bad mints or really bad launches. And it's like, if you can move on from that stuff, that is real strength. And I think the alternative of, you know, attempting to gaslight people is just not helpful. So I think that, again, looking at this as a use case, um, the lesson there is kind of like, if you mess up, own it, right? Don't, don't mess up and then say, you know, it was super successful. You know, it just wasn't. And I mean, if, if it was successful in the numbers, sure. Like th that's one thing, but if the market is telling you it wasn't a success, then it wasn't a success, you know? And, and I think that, um, even though sometimes it feels like it was a success, you kind of have to find that reality. And I think that's one thing that's like so hard, um, to do now. I think that, uh, and I see, um, see, uh, <laughs> see Grelf requesting to speak Grelf. I'll have you up in a minute. Um, the other thing too, is like, um, I think that the strategy is just not good. And there's the, again, it's like feeding the trolls. It's like, you know, I think that I've seen this with a few projects, especially coming into web three that are fresh. It's like, it's, a, it is a different environment. Even, you know, I shouldn't even just say web three. I see this in like the AI startup space too. It's like this old age, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, core tenet of, of the internet of like, don't not, don't feed the trolls. Cause some people are just trolls, you know, and, and we've talked about this before on so many different spaces. Um, and then I think that one other thing to keep in mind is um, an enterprise being uncomfortable in web three is not the same as being bullied, right? Those are two different things. And I think that in this case it was, you know, I think it went past that point. Um, but I think that, you know, there's sometimes that those are conflated in a little way. And it's like, I think that again, an enterprise or organization, if they don't put that time into understanding the market, of course, when they do a launch, they're going to feel out of place. Um, and so I think that that's again, our big lesson there is like, um, you know, it's so important to spend that time and really kind of be in it. Um, because you do have to, you know, you have to toughen up. You have to know the market. You have to have a plan. You can't let things get out of control if, if, if things mess up. You know, if, if you do mess up or you stumble, you are going to have, um, you are, that's when you are going to start to get toxic people and bullies and stuff. And it's, I think it's important to not let it get to that point. And again, there's so many projects that do a great job of being able to, um, to ride that line. And then, you know, I think that, it's just not good to close yourself off and just not good to put that message out there of wanting to not be transparent or stuff like that. I think that, um, you know, actions and intentions gotta be for transparency. I think that's really important. So 
that's VR Jam. And again, peace and love, respect, looking at this as a case study. I think that, you know, it's, it's important to just kind of, you know, understand kind of what went down. Um, and again, not so much about the actual ins and out uh, ins and outs of it or mechanics of it. It's more, um, the, the optics aspect of it, the marketing aspects of it, the community aspect of it, the communication aspect of it, that, it, that is so important. Now, um, again, the other side to this is the H bar community and the Hedera community. And I think that on one hand, I think people are too quick to label criticism or frustration or anger as bullying. I mean, I think that, you know, as a new ecosystem and web three kind of still being a bit new, um, I think across the board, you know, trolls and DGENs and shit posters and all that kind of stuff. They do play a role in the ecosystem. It's like a little filter. It's not great, but it's, it's a market. It's a, it, this is stuff trying to come to maturity. Um, and that will happen. And I think as it does, folks like that won't play such a big role, but I think that that's, I think that's the nuanced stuff that's really difficult, but I think that what's not nuanced is I think that some of you in the Hedera community are legitimately insane. Like, to be honest, um, there's a few people, these are the truly toxic people. And I think, you know, when a project turns to shit, like annoying flies, you know, you buzz over to pick apart the remains and yell and scream on X. It's like kind of like arriving as things are falling apart. And I think that, you know, somehow seeing a project fail brings joy. And I think that that's where we, you know, it's, it's, I think there's like a line between like goofing on somebody. Um, but I do think that there's a line that gets crossed. And I think we saw that in this instance. And I think that really enjoying seeing projects fail and, and glomming on like that and really kind of just beating a dead horse. It's just nuts. And I think that, um, folks like that, you represent the worst in web three and you represent the worst of the dare community. And I think you're the ultimate barrier to mass adoption because let's zoom out even more. Sure. VR jam messed up. Sure. I think that the founding team, uh, is, you know, unhinged in a lot of ways, but we zoom out. What do you see? Right. You see a project with, you know, as they say, you know, some major clients and this and that, um, and you just see what's on the surface and it's just, it's just a nightmare. How does that make Hedera an attractive place to build? Right. It's a barrier, right? These, and again, I, I, you know, these people, and you know who you are, you know, you create this stench of this loser energy in this ecosystem that other people smell. And that's what I see. I see posts on Twitter from people outside of Hedera. And it's like, Oh, more drama in Hedera. Oh, more of this and that. And it's like this tiny group of people. It's repulsive, right? You're a small group. You keep getting smaller. I hope you sell your bags and leave. That's all I have to say about that. It's just nuts. I think that, I think that, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'll, you know, I'll shit on VR jam all day, but they, as bad as VR jam, they do not deserve that at all. Nobody does. And I, and again, I'm talking about a very few people and it's not just VR jam. It's every single thing. These folks show up and it just grind, grinds my goddamn gears. Um, and also too, overall, I think we need higher quality projects that att attract higher quality people. Um, but that means we've got to be a community deserving of high quality projects. And again, the outside this week from the outside, it just does not appear this way. Hedera does just not appear as a high quality community. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate because again, it's this group of people. Um, and again, I, you know, I don't want to identify anybody and I don't know who, the, who all these people are. I just get this sense and I'm hearing from people of just these, you know, folks going nuts. Um, and also too, please, you know, show some respect to the H bar bull. I mean, this guy has been tirelessly dedicated to the community for years. People say stuff like, you know, he works for the H bar foundation. There's a conflict of interest and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what guy needs to pay his bills. I have huge respect for anybody who's made the sacrifices needed to stay full time um, in this ecosystem, especially through a bear market. 
Like that's the, like that's the, the best possible outcome we can have is folks like uh, DH Barbol, Brandon, being in this ecosystem, being active full time. Um, it's a huge asset. And it's just, again, it's just infuriating to me to kind of see people, you know, dumping on them that way. It's just, it's just nuts. Um, and I mean, people like the H bar bowl, you know, they're the best of this community. That's why people want to build here. Um, and you know, I disagree with the H bar bowl on VR jam. I don't think that, you know, he should have done that spaces, but I agree with him on 90% of stuff. He's a legend. Like, you have to respect that. So I just, I, you have, like, we have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to be able to disagree with people and, you know, have debates or whatever. Um, but like have, you know, understand that, you know, there's, there, there are lines and when you cross them, it just creates so many problems. It turns again, something that is just a tiny little failure into this massive overblown thing. And I think that, um, it's just tough. So again, zooming out, Mo, everybody in this ecosystem believes in the network. They hold H bar, right? That should be bigger than any drama of the day, right? That's the way I see someone on X and I'm, you know, getting into it with them. I see Tom listening down there. Tom, sometimes I'll get in into it with them on X and be back and forth with stuff or whatever. I'm pretty, I, I can scroll through the list of folks listening live. I've probably gotten in, you know, <laughs> arguments with most of you, but it doesn't matter because it's like, I'm talking to someone who also believes the same things I do. You know, we're both building on Hedera. It's just energy. So it's like, what can we do to stop it from getting to that point? And I think that, you know, wrapping up, it's like, we just have to stop highlighting these projects. Um, they don't have a clear value proposition. And especially if they're soliciting investment from the community, it's like, you know, what's, why is it so important? Why, you know, VR jam themselves say it's so tiny and insignificant and stuff. It's like, they're a tiny and significant project and they just, you know, they just don't have the gas right now to do what they got to do. And, um, you know, I think that it's like, just go back to the drawing board and then do some cool stuff. You know, projects, it happens to projects all the time. So it's up, it, it, you know, it's up to them, uh, to sort it out. But I think it's like, you know, let's zoom out here a little bit. And kind of go like, you know, this is a situation in the ecosystem. This isn't the whole, <laughs> this isn't the whole ecosystem. Um, and yeah, I think that that goes kind of the, to the theme of the show. We've got to think bigger, right? We have to think bigger than all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to invite um, a, uh, <laughs> I don't know quite, I don't know quite how this is going to go, but I'm inviting Grelf um, up to the stage here. Um, I don't know exactly who I'm getting. If I'm getting, if Grelf is on the phone, I hope that your connection is good from the stump. Um, how's it going, Grelf? Luckily you're getting Warlock today. Oh, thank God. Cause every time I have Grelf on his connection from the stump <laughs> is like cutting in and out. So good stuff. How you doing Warlock? I'm, I'm doing great. Yeah. Sometimes he puts a microphone in his mouth. I know. Uh, not trustworthy. Um, been listening, really like the discussion. I think, um, what you touched on with failure uh, is really important mm -hmm. um, because failure is a teacher. Uh, it doesn't just teach you when you fail. Uh, it teaches others about you uh, mm. with how you deal with it. Um, but it's also a narrative opportunity. And I think that was a big, I think that was a big misstep. Uh, and I think maybe it's because of more corporate training or, or something um, but to have, you know, a failure, a misstep and try to spin it as a success, maybe that, I don't really think it works. And I don't think like modern PR training endorses this at all, No. Uh, but especially in a web three community, which is very different than any kind of normal consumer interaction. Uh, when you interact with a brand like Nike, you're not going to go into the Nike discord and talk to the people behind Nike. You know, that <laughs> the fact that you can do that, uh, with, with web three stuff is, is makes it a completely different landscape for, uh, communication between your customers. Uh, so the method of like 
okay, nobody can comment. That's not allowed on, on our tweets. Then we can just push out messaging and people will receive it. It doesn't work. Mm. It's, it's, it's simply a non-starter. Uh, what they could have done is come down to our level. And I think that's, I think that's what's missing. Uh, I've had a, a bajillion failures. Uh, <laughs> my, my time in web three has been just trying a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when I fail, I, I did not try to spin it as a success. Like a lot of times I would just come out and be like, Oh man, that didn't go really well. Or, you know, it's something you can talk to people about and you can come down to their level. You know, you're human too. Being genuine is, is definitely an asset in this space. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the flies that you're you're talking about uh, see that as weakness. Sure. Uh, and they uh, they'll use that as an opportunity to come in and and, and wreck your day as well. Um, so, yeah, I definitely agree that people like that make the whole thing kind of harder um, yeah. for for people to be a little more human and and be a little more honest because it is a very new, strange, uh, and, and competitive space. Um, but I just, anytime someone is like talking about like failure, I'm like, Hey, I know about that. Yeah. That's, and I mean, you, you hit a really good, really good point there of that. There is, I think we've all, all experienced that moment of, you know, the flies approaching and it's like, Oh God, here we go. And it's, it's, I think that if you, and that's really where it's so important to understand the community. And this is, I think what, what separates the winners from the bozos is it doesn't matter if it's web three, doesn't matter if it's automotive, doesn't matter if it's the restaurant business, whatever it is. If you come into it, not knowing anybody or anything about it and you start participating, you're just going to get caught off guard by so many different things. Um, and it's, it's insane to me to also ask for investment from the community. Like it's nuts. I think it's just absolutely nuts to come in with zero experience and be like, Oh, by the way, also give us money. Um, but the thing is, is like, there is that moment where you mess up as you described and you have that like, uh Oh, here they come. And it's this kind of thing. If you understand the dynamic and you have experience, you're going to be able to navigate that. Um, and that's, I think what we've seen separate, um, you know, the, the winners from the bozos is like, um, you know, I, I'll call them out, you know, dead pixels, hash pack, H graph punks, um, many of my own initiatives, um, you know, Grelf yourself. It's like, you know, projects just fail and drop the ball and they're still here and they're thriving better than they ever have before. And it's because as you described, it's like they were able to overcome those things, use them as a narrative opportunity, use them as an opportunity to, to build trust, to overcome challenges. Um, yeah, I think you, I think you hit it really well, but I think that you, you, kind of hit on something I, I didn't, which was that, that magical moment of messing up and those flies coming and not understanding what to do or who they are um, when they get there. And it, it, they exist in every single ecosystem, every single, uh, like I'm seeing crazy stuff happening in the AI space, people ripping off each other's websites, people um, rugging each other, people like this corporate sabotage. It's a knife fight out there too. So I think if it, it all comes down to understanding the space you're playing in, you know, and I think that's really what it's all about. So no, I pr appreciate those insights. Uh, uh, appreciate those insights big time, man. I'm on the, I'm on the Grelf Twitter and there's a great picture of Grelf napping. Um, so I think that's great. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's the big takeaway here. I'm scrolling through the Twitter account. Grelf is napping. He's relaxed. He's moisturized, thriving in his lane. It's good to see. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, Grelf started as a big failure. I mean, it, it it was not an overnight success. The first six months of Grelf was just, you know, and people are still around from there. Like, they remember. Uh, it was it, it was a complete failure. Uh, the only thing is you just have to keep going. It yeah. doesn't take much to just keep going. It doesn't take much to be present. People don't expect me to be cranking out five memes a day. They just want to see me around. Yeah. You know, they just want to see me like breathing in the same area they're breathing. Yeah. Like it doesn't take much, but if you fail and then you disappear, 
that says something about you. And if like things improve <laughs> and then you suddenly pop up again, uh, you know, people are right to look at you with criticism. You can't, you, you shouldn't get mad about that. You yeah, know? Absolutely. And I think another, like, I want to give a different, an exa- and again, I, I look at the VR jam stuff as a case study. I always think case studies can either be, you know, successes or, or failures. It's like, this is a case study of a failure. I think it's important for people to understand lessons learned, lots, to, lots of value here anyways. But then the other side of it is um, if we want to look at a similar example um, of, you know, projects that kind of fail and overcome stuff um, at a really, you know, high level and high visibility is the HBAR foundation. Talk about a talk about a, an organization and project that's come under tons of fire from the community, lots of pressure from I imagine all sorts of different angles, um, overcoming all sorts of different things, and you know you 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 know you own some of those uh, you know you own some of those failures. You work towards it, and you know we hear that all the time. Enterprise moves slow and this and that, but just starting to make moves in the right direction and not and and staying in the game. And having that thick skin, it's like, you know, we have that at the highest levels and we also have that at the, uh, you know, at the, we say the low, you mentioned this too, like come down to our level. It's like, I also think we have to start thinking about that in, in, in those terms of like retail somehow on a lower level. It's like, can we all get on the same level? Um, we got people overcoming stuff. We got people failing. We got people learning. We got all this kind of stuff. I think that's really where the magic happens. Um, and so... Yeah, I mean, I could talk about this. I could talk about this forever. Maybe we just turn this into a a, a mastermind on 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 failure in the Web three space. But um, the show might actually turn into a failure within itself. This episode might end up being three or four hours long, so might not be the best idea. But um, before we move on, Warlock, any any uh, any takeaways um, on your end from kind of this stuff, and maybe um, you know just from your perspective too, like any advice for you know other projects getting started out trying to avoid these uh you know these kind of pitfalls uh i can i can sum it all up in one sentence Mm. if you want people to treat you like a human be a human Mm. okay i think that i think that hits it transparency authenticity i dig it i dig it right people don't want to follow brands they want to follow personalities they want to follow people mm. so be a person don't try to be a brand yeah. and I, I don't want to sound cheesy but I, I start going back to the you know 2020 zoom calls with Lehman every month uh, you know I think that's why a lot of us got into Adair in the first place is because there was that strong personality that founder that was open approachable and uh, you know I think that the it, it, the community really adopted a lot of those traits so the network itself is true to what you're saying. Warlock, cheers, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Thanks. Thanks for, for letting me on and talk about my many failures. <laughs> right on. Okay, so now I want to flip the script a little bit here and talk about some big, big wins, some big dubs. Uh, but first... Really quick mention, uh, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody supporting the show. Appreciate everybody. Um, could not do it without you guys. You know, the show doesn't have any sponsors, doesn't have any advertisers. I have people reach out, but I say no. I want to, you know, say what I like to say, um, and I can do it because of support from the ecosystem and from people sending H bar to a wallet. And then I sell that H bar and buy stuff like this microphone. And, um, I'm at, I have a bunch of new stuff coming to the show that I'm very, very excited to share soon, but could not do it without you guys. So appreciate it. Now let's dive into what really matters. Let's dive into the real meta of web three. Let's dive into what is at the top of everybody's minds in the Hedera ecosystem. Uh, Pet photos, I posted a thread of pet photos uh, or of a photo of my pet. Um, and this is what's top of mind for me right now. Unfortunately, for people watching on the Twitter Spaces feed, actually, I don't know. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Hold on. We might have the technology. Can I take my... We can do this, guys. One sec. We can do this. For people watching the, uh, the video, for people watching the, the video recording, what I'm doing 
is a very advanced technique. Give me one sec. Let's just get some hold music going here. Okay, we've got it. <clears throat> I hope everybody can see that. I cannot see my phone. So if the spaces break, uh, someone someone message me or something. Um, so this is the most important thing that we can talk about today. Um, this is Pets of Hedera. Um, yesterday or someday, maybe Monday, I don't know, I posted a thread about... Um, my, uh, our little dog. And I said, Hey, can you also share photos of your pets as well? And I was overwhelmed by the responses. And if you are not bullish on this ecosystem and the good vibes in it, uh, you haven't seen this thread. So let's go through this. Uh, this is, this is, this is, uh, my little one. Um, and then right off the bat, Lehman board, um, we've got a smattering of pets here. There's a couple cuties. Um, Christian Hasker comes in with these two guys. And also Ken commented an Oreo cookie. Ken, um, I don't want to get too deep into semantics, but it would be an Oreo cookie if there was another black dog on the, on the other side. Um, so don't want to start splitting hairs, but um, geez. Uh, so this is uh, Hobley shares his six month old Fox red Labrador. What a beaut. Let's see here. Uh, so we also had some pets that had passed away. Lucy passed away on Saturday. Um, so sorry to hear. King Solomon with his pets. Um, a cat, a turkey, uh, which looks like a, a beautifully cooked turkey. Um, and this gem right here. King Solomon, respect. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grelf. Um, Grelf comments, uh, about this will be his pet soon. Um, so incredibly bullish on that. Uh, Jacob from Hashpack, Winston Macaroni. Look at this guy. That's a good one. I want to make sure the spaces can still see. There we go. Got to keep it adjusted. Uh, the H bar car dog. Can this dog drive a car? We don't know. We need to find out. Um, possible tease from H Bar Suite. Another beaut. Bonacci, shout out. Um, his little dog was born last weekend. So that's a new pup. Probably on the way home soon. Uh, Tom from Pixfy got these guys right here. Also, some horses, which I dig. Um, and I'm still waiting. He, he also mentioned there also is a third dog that is not pictured. So Tom, we're still waiting. If you're still listening, we're still waiting on a photo of the third dog. Um, that's a very high priority. Uh, Warlock, who's just on the show, his little pupperinos there. I love it. Um, H bar Joe cat gang represent one and two. I dig it. Uh, Rebecca, baby Sammy. Love it. Hadarian Z, an actual legend. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Fantastic. Oscar the cat. Another great one. And this is the move right here, right beside the heat vent. That's big brain. Um, also, too, Tamara also sharing her other dog, Milo, who is still with us. Rock on the H, uh, the hash graph shirt. I have that shirt, so I dig it. Uh, Tony sharing a photo of a lion. Um, this is at a, a wildlife refuge, S so I would say that counts as a pet. Um, Pluto from Hash Pack. Just this guy, just this little goober right here. Love it. Um, D shares Sunny the puppy. This is a little tiny one, probably on the way home. Love that. Um, let's see here. Birdman shares the myth, the, uh, the man, the legend Yankee, um, cat gang still representing. I, I should probably figure out like what the ratio is from cats to dogs, um, in this thread. 
Um, also coming in heavy, four dogs. Um, Bear, Robin, Roxy, and Boots from Bob Lazar. Um, don't know if that's the real Bob Lazar, but if you are, shout out. Um, Milo. Now, this is what we call a power stance. This is, this is a very, very strong energy. Uh, incredibly strong energy. Um, Henry, also an incredibly strong energy. Uh, lo- feels like looking right into my soul. Uh, we also have Kobe, Chocolate Bernadoodle, Dig It, representing. Um, also, we've got Tony with his other dogs right here. Not just a lion, guys. Also has some dogs. So that's amazing. Um, this So Alfa Romeo shares uh, um, their dog, this good girl right here just got back from a major surgery on the back legs, but is at home now in a pirate hat, rocking and rolling. Um, I love that. Love to see it. Dogs just absolutely thriving. Um, also, look at this guy right here, Inca. What a what a beauty. Also, beautiful scene. That's a cliff or something with the ocean or something in the background. Uh, Lord Crypto Mang. My two boys, those are, I can confirm those are two boys right there. Right here. Uh, I thought the username on this real quick was dog. So I thought it was just a dog sharing a picture of itself, but no. Um, This is great too. Ghost is ready for the bull run. Laser eyes. This is the dog with laser eyes. Um, This is not a joke. This is not a drill. This dog is ready for the bull market. Crate is open, unleashed. Um. So we've got some Frenchies here. Fantastic stuff. I love it. Some blankets. Dig that. Coco and Molly. Um, more cats representing Mia, Kyra, and Kiwi. And again, these are all people in the Hedera ecosystem. These are H barbarians. Uh, Boomer. Look at this guy. Also got a stuffed dog. This is a dog that also has a dog. Um, but unfortunately... Um, passed away in August, uh, but you know, fantastic to see memory live on in this Twitter thread. Um, sometimes you just need to buy a bigger couch. This is true. Learned this lesson many times. It's a big boy. Um, triple threat. Uh, this was quite a dynamic one. We got we got pupper, pupper, pupper in the garden. Um, again, very very strong stance. Very very. Th- th- this is a power move right here. Hundred percent. Um, also Luffy, very dynamic individual by the looks of it. Um, there, there's no context for this. I don't think that any context is needed. Um, dog in a hammock it is what it is. Um, Frenchie action here again, Raider, the seven month old Frenchie. Love it. Also got a bulldog. English Bulldog, fantastic. Another little pupper here. It's at, it, it, it keeps going. It keeps going, guys. Look at this right here. Boom. Another. Boom. Molly and Mogi. How beautiful. Corgi. We've got corgis. We've got corgis in the ecosystem. Checking in. Look at this. Shanty. Boom. Ready for the bull market. 100%. More Frenchies, right? Reporting in, ready for duty. We also got Juno, a rescue. They didn't know what the makeup was. Turns out, 100% dog. Look at that. Also, boom, 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 more. Look at this. That's a vibe. That's a Sunday vibe. H Barrific shares these two gems. Beauties. Feels like this goes on forever. This, this face right here, this is the face that I make when I discover a new meme coin on Hedera. That's the face right there. More Frenchy action. Checking in. And I mean, that's the face that I make when the meme coin that I just chose does a 10x. That's what's up. That's me and my friend when our meme coin does a 10x. Um, this is my face 
uh, when the meme coin my invest um, I invest in does not do a 10x. Um, that's my face. Um, from Nick. Boom. Look at this. That's the face that I make when H bar does a 10x. Completely confused. Rocky and Cali. Doggos. More doggos. Look at this. H bar dogs. This is still in the Twitter thread. Just this one Twitter thread, guys. Look at this. Now, this right here, this is what it's all about. This is peak for me. Cat in sync. The cat in the sink is is doesn't get any better than that. Boom. Another very strong power stance. Um, donkeys, horses, dogs, turtles. Literally, we got turtles checking in. Like, we got the whole gamut here. We got a whole arc. Boom. Look at this beauty. 15-year-old. Look at that. Cat action checking in. Another power stance. Completely common during the baby the baby carrier just take over. This is the face that I make when the meme coin uh, that I invest in uh, does an airdrop and I did not associate the, to the, the new token. That's the face that I make. Um, boom. We got weenies checking in wiener dogs. Every, like the whole, like everybody's represented here. Everybody ham, ham I think is watching right now. Shout out um, lady H another Frenchie checking in. Boom. Done. More puppies. I mean, we can keep going on. H bar quantum leap. Gemly. Look at these. Three more. There's there's safe. <laughs> um, n more doggies. More cat. Dog. Dog and cat. Like we got it. more Frenchies. More dogs. More cats. Another dog and a dinosaur. It keeps going. Like, this is just incredible. So I'd encourage people to go check out that thread. It's pinned to the top of the spaces. Um, and I, it just I, it caught me completely off guard. Uh, literally feels like there must have been over 100 pets shared um, in that Twitter thread, which is nuts. So I encourage people to go check it out. If you do have a pet as well, share it in the Twitter thread. Let's keep it going. Um, did not expect it to get that much attention, but yet here we are. Look at the joy that it's brought. Um, okay. I want to switch back into uh, business mode here. We got some more stuff to talk about. We're well through the show guys. Appreciate everyone sticking around. Shout out to, I see stick bug there, led Tom, Paul, Michael's there. Ham's there. We got everybody. We got the crew here. I'm digging it. Um, Dow's. DAOs are really important. Uh, nobody quite knows what to do with them yet. Nobody quite knows what's going on, but we're trying. Um, all we know is that we really need a way for projects and community members to be able to drive those things, right? Have the mechanisms available to, you know, um, make decisions, set the path. And then more importantly, for projects and communities to be able to incentivize action to make things happen. And what that requires is a DAO platform. Um, and there's a few, there's a few out there. Um, there's the, the creators galaxy protocol from galaxy. Um, Turtle moon also has um, a voting mechanism. There's the hash graph DAO working group um, that, uh, that I'm a part of. There's all sorts of cool down related stuff happening in Hedera, which is great. But what's the kind of like out of the box, got everything you need, um, ready to go uh, solution, right? We don't quite have that solution until now. Swirls announced that they've launched Hash.io DAO. And basically this is a platform, um, again, from Swirls, where you can launch your DAO um, and issue tokens, um, put up proposals, um, hold assets like a, like a shared wallet. You have different members. Um, you can have different aspects of the DAO. Um, so this is a platform that is robust enough for projects to tap in and leverage it for governance. 
whether you already have a token made um, or whether you need to make a token, this platform kind of just gets you set up. I had a really good demo of this um, product previously. I want to give a shout out to Ian Holzman at Swords Labs, who uh, I think has really been working for a long time on this. Um, and, uh, you know, that team over there at Swords, I think it's, you know, this is a great product, one that's needed. I encourage people to go check it out, play around with it. Um, and again, this was just announced maybe an hour and a half ago. So I haven't had time to actually dive into it and play around with it myself. Um, but I can say that most likely if there's a feature that you need for a DAO platform, um, this software, uh, would probably work for you. And it's kind of a, a platform and it's open source, I believe as well. So you can fork the repo and like build your own stuff. So it's, it's a whole thing. I'd encourage anybody interested in DAOs, um, especially in Hedera to kind of like check this out, dive into the source code, um, mess around with it. Um, but, uh, yeah, not, not, not too much more to talk about until I have a chance to play around with it, but super cool development in the space. I love to see it. Um, we need more stuff like this. Shout out to Swirls. I dig it. Um, one of our last stories today uh, that I wanted to just touch on, which is something that I spoke to at the beginning of the show, which was like, you know, episode 118, I was talking about, you know, the insider tips or whatever that was shared with me talking about different things. Um, and, you know, I've seen the conversation continued elsewhere in the ecosystem. And there was one that was kind of interesting um, that that kind of, you know, attached to the like the monster use case in quarter three um and those are the words that were used uh by by my source and again if you want more info on that specific topic go listen to episode 118 um but on the community subreddit on the hedera subreddit um you know obviously someone talking about this you know this what this could be in some predictions um and, you know, it was mentioned by its brand and D that there would be a monster use case expected in Q3, blah, blah, blah. Um, so obviously there's some time before we get to Q3 or that, or that, you know, whatever it could be. But myself and people in the community are kind of like, well, what could that be? What would, what would be deemed like a monster use case? And, you know, I, just to be clear, nothing, no, no information in, in that regard was shared with me. Uh, nothing in, in relation to kind of what it could be. So kind of in this, I, I just was curious about this thread um, because there's some cool ideas in here about maybe what it could be. Um, and I wanted to highlight this because some of it I just forgot about, like to be honest, like some of it I just literally forgot about. So we've got Dell's use case that's set to come live. We've got the coupon bureau um, that is obviously making moves. They have a new CEO um, lots of breadcrumbs swirling around there. The most notable development that we talked about on on the show recently was the fact that um, Toshiba's point of sale systems, which are the most used in the world, um, uh, were or had integrated the eighty one twelve standard. So, like, there's blockers being removed for um, the coupon bureau use case. Also, um, it could potentially be Neuron being integrated into the FAA and the UK equivalent. We've seen so many substantial developments with Neuron, uh, which has been great. Um, also could be drop related. Could be Bank Social. We've seen some big announcements out from Bank Social. Um, is, there a, is there a use case for Mondelez? Is there a use case from BitGo? BitGo is very interesting too because um, a lot of folks don't know. BitGo actually runs six mirror nodes um, for Hedera for, I guess, their internal purposes. They like from what I understand about Bitco is they're pretty, pretty ingrained at this point into the Hedera ecosystem and network and providing those types of services. And um, so they're ones that I think are very, very interesting. And again, like we talked about on the show previously and, and like Charles, the president of Hedera was saying, um, you know, it took a while for BitGo to get on the governing council and BitGo was like working on use cases. They're, um, you know, they're, they're web three specialists, all these different types of things. And there was for whatever reason, kind of a hesitancy from the governing council to onboard web three companies as kind of Charles articulated something to the effect of that on a spaces, um, last week or the week before. And so kind of, it feels to me like BitGo is like really, you know, rare in a BitGo, 
Um, and so I, 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 I'd expect something if, if we look at the roadmap or, or length of time from joining the governing council to launching a use case, I think BitGo would probably be one of the shortest. I, I think that for other governing council members that joined this year, it would be a stretch to say they would be launching a use case in quarter three. Like my personal thoughts, like Mondelez, probably not. Um, Dell, you know, probably not, but BitGo, I mean, BitGo, I don't know. It seems like they're, they're, they're already kind of chooch in there. So I wouldn't say that's crazy. Um, also, too, Hyundai, another one that kind of we haven't really talked about a ton, but right, Hyundai really announcing that they're using Hedera for real-time carbon offset tracking for their supply chain stuff, very similar to at IO. Um, that is very cool. That could potentially be a bit a, a monster use case, I would say. Also, too, Fresh Supply Co. They are ones that we talk about on the show a lot, and I think that ones are pretty hyped for in the community especially with their ties to MasterCard and also having just won the award um, in uh, Tokyo for uh, innovation in the carbon offset space. So FSEO, uh, Fresh Supply Company, another one. Um, and, you know, having kind of read those, I think there's a little bit more of a discussion on here. Um, I don't know. This stuff's fun. I mean, I don't like, I'm still a sucker for that stuff. I guess maybe that's kind of like the old school age barbarian in me is like, I love, you know, what could be happening? What could, who could the new governing council member be? I love doing that stuff. Sometimes I get bummed out when, um, you know, you kind of do some predictions and kind of whatever. And it's like, there's a bit of a jaded quality. Sometimes this ecosystem of like, Oh, screw those people or all oh, that will never happen. It's like, you know, I think that, you know, I've shared enough of my skepticism and, you know, whatever, you know, against like whatever organization it is, uh, of the week. But like, I love dreaming up this stuff or like predicting things or whatever. I think it's fun. Um, this brings me to one of our last stories, which is right in line with this. And I wanted to bring it up because I think this, if we want to, if we, if we talk about maybe what the worst of the community is, you know, we've talked about, you know, these flies in the ecosystem or whatever. But if we want to talk about the best in the community, if we want to talk about thinking big, zooming out, the, the I think the best way to wrap up this kind of like three-parter on thinking big in this ecosystem is this, uh, this tweet shared by Zenobia um, on, what day was it? Uh, April 4th. So, um this was obviously a screenshot that Zenobia shared that Lehman Baird probably sent in Slack in the organization. And this, I think, is just like some of the magic that I really want to see stay in this community um, that like just truly out there crazy ideas. So <laughs> I'm just going to read this because it's nuts, but I, lo I love this. And I think this is the kind of stuff we should be blasting out there. This is the founder of this network, uh, co-founder of this network, talking about the most insane, wild, wacky stuff. And I just think that like this is the kind of energy that will, will make Hedera very attractive for a lot of people. Um, so Lehman says, I discussed the issues of galactic timekeeping in a video a few years ago. The hash graph algorithm works very well to give consensus timestamps that are reasonable, even if the nodes are spread across the galaxy. Those on Earth will use UTC. Those on the moon can use LTC. And those in other star systems can have their own systems. Like, just there, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What are we talking about? Um, compared to the other side of the galaxy, we will say their clocks are running slower than ours. And they will say that our clocks are running slower than theirs. And we will disagree on the order of things happening in the universe. And according to special relativity, we're both right. So already, like, I don't even, like, I don't even know like a quarter of what he's talking about. But Hashgraph will create a kind of universal clock with a guaranteed universal ordering of everything that happens. It actually overcomes the problems of relativity for a galaxy-wide civilization. Like... That's the kind of stuff that I miss in the space. I, you know, I think that like this bear market and coming out of it, like I was saying at the top of the show is just like, man, it's rough, but I really want the community to get back to that headspace of like truly talking about crazy stuff. 
Um, you know, and I think that I want to give a, I want to give a quick shout out to, you know, the club H bar community, um, in discord, you know, I think that, you know, I, I, you know, there's just, again, I think that there's just a lot of discussions right now that are related to things like, you know, bummer stuff like VR jam or like whatever it is. And it's like, there are times when the discussions are totally different and, you know, people are talking about wacky, you know, in this example, like intergalactic timekeeping and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I love that. I think that's, that's really kind of peak Hedera for me is, is really kind of talking about crazy stuff, really getting deep into it. Like very philosophical. I find that w this community at its best is very philosophical in that way. I think that's attractive for a lot of people. Um, so I love this. I love more of this. Um, and yeah, shout out to club H bar. Um, I think that there's some good discussions like that happening in there. Um, and other, lots of other great discord, uh, communities or just communities in general as well. Um, I'd be remiss to say, um, sh you know, not say shout out to the hash graph enthusiasts, uh, community on X, um, well over 1200 members, I think. Um, so that's, that's great to see. Um, last thing is, uh, a news item that just uh, dropped, uh, I believe, six days ago. But again, talking about learning from failure, trying new strategies, moving forward, even though it might not be the right direction, just better directions and, and, and really kind of trying to adjust, adapt, pivot. Um, you know, we look at the HBAR Foundation um, and some news that Shane, the CEO of the HBAR Foundation, shared um, on uh, AJ's AJ Crypto show. This was uh, this was something. So let's listen to this real quick. I think this is something that the community, I think, is going to be very interested in, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how the foundation kind of like rolls this out. Um, again, I think DAOs are very very hard to do right, um, but I think that if you ha if you hand it over to the community it probably increases your chances of success so let's take a listen in and, and see what uh, shane's talking about from the foundation there's an area where we believe uh and we've talked to a few community members but we believe there's an opportunity to fund a dow and so mm. we're excited about that that's not that's something awesome. you know we've done before but it is something we're going to do uh and so wow. you know that's a little bit of alpha for your audience that you know and i'm sure there are folks that have some ideas um, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, contemplation that goes in that, but mm -hmm. we, we want to do the right thing and we want to, you know, crawl, walk, run. Right. So, uh, you know, let's figure out how to do that. We want to certainly, um, you know, fund that and be a part of it and make sure that the community feels empowered to make some of the decisions. We're only on average over the last three years, AJ, we're only 25 people in the foundation. So when you compare us to that, that, when you compare us to other chains where they've got you know 175 people that have both R and D right, and then they've also got grant giving and they've got you know the network management, we're we're not a ton of people, and so to do what we've done, build some of the processes we've done, surely we've missed some, but you know we've tried to be capital efficient and not over hiring. Uh, and try to focus on the things that are going to add value to the network. We believe the partnership with the community is going to be key to the next phases of growth. And like, that's a good example too of like really taking that opposite approach and going like, let's get closer, you know, let's, let's start giving the community more power, this and that. So again, I think it's less about like the actual objective and the intent behind the objective. It's like, the intent here is to give more resources and control to the community. Great. So let's figure out what that looks like. And I think that the wrong way to approach that would be to kind of workshop something in internally. And I think that a fresh approach is kind of just randomly throwing it out there. Um, so I dig it. I like it. Um, I think that, you know, just throwing stuff out there and, and uh, letting the community be a part of it is, uh, you know, it's good stuff. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that unfolds and, and what, it, what it maybe looks like. I don't like maybe, you know, we, we talk about, um, you know, the hash IO DAO platform launched by swirls. There's also like the creators galaxy protocol. So like the tools are there to make something like that happen. Um, so then the next question is like, 
What does funding look like? What does the structure look like? All these different types of things. And it's exciting because like, what does a fully fledged DAO look like on Hedera? Um, I think that DAOs are so attractive in the web three space. Everybody's trying to do it. And, and, and largely I think failing. Um, and I think that there's a chance here to really do something cool, whether it's the H bar foundation or whether it's any of the other initiatives. Like I know that there's, you know, um, the hell of future DAO, And there's also, um, other groups wanting to start a DAO. There's, um, Oh, there's a few other ones too. There's Hashnals is going to be doing a DAO. Like there's all these things are coming out of the woodwork. The tooling is starting to come there. The funding is, 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 you know, will, will soon follow. And it's just, it's very interesting. I think that this is Hedera's chance to try at the DAO thing and let's see what happens uh, because it's a little bit different, right? It's not the same as um, DeFi, for example, where every network is very much ahead and Hedera is playing catch up with, with DAO kind of stuff. It's like, everybody's still in a very kind of infant phase and sure there are a lot of very well established DAOs, but they have, you know, there, there's all sorts of different problems that do come along with the technology. Like for example, it can be very, very, very expensive to do votes. It can be very, very slow to do votes. A great example is with bank social with their DAO on another chain is because votes are so expensive to do, they do what's called a temperature check vote, which is basically just like, Maybe like, you know, you could think of it as like a Google form poll or something to even figure out if it's worth doing the vote at all before spending the money to do it. And so um, that's I, I just think that here's a real opportunity. Um, and I think that if there was a time for this community to just cut the shit, get together, make some stuff happen, it is now. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time. It's time, guys. It's time. And, and I'm feeling super bullish on these projects. Like I, I'm i looking around. I'm, I'm going on Saucer Swap. I'm going on, on CentX marketplaces. I'm going on. I'm checking all this stuff out. I'm popping into discords. Um, and what I'm seeing is, is everybody's level of polish is increasing. All these projects that have been around for years are doubling down on things that work. Um, there's, there's, there's maturing happening in the retail space. Um, there's obviously stuff happening in the enterprise space. I know that it's very easy to be jaded or be pessimistic or critical or fearful. Um, and I know that there's so many different problems in this ecosystem and so many different problems with projects and all these different types of stuff, but there's a great quote and I can't remember who it is, but they say problems are opportunities in work clothes. Right. And if you want to be successful in this industry, you've got to be a fan of problems. You got to look for problems. You got to love problems. You got to get excited when you see problems because those are opportunities to solve. People will pay you to solve those problems. Right. So it's clear we got lots of problems. So that means we got lots of opportunity. 100%. Um, well, with that, I mean, what a week. It's funny. It's like doing these shows, the format of the show is changing so much. The ecosystem is changing so much. Um, I'm honestly really excited. Um, I think that, you know, th things are just feeling a little more open, um, a little more candid or, or a little more candid. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. There's just, something's changing. Something that my overall sense is positive um, and excited because it's like I said, good or bad, there's energy here. The, the, the one thing you cannot say about this ecosystem right now is that it's quiet, right? Is that it's not energetic or that it's not grabbing attention. It's like we can, we can debate on the type of attention it's grabbing or whatever, but um, I go back a few years I'll take it. People are talking about it. People are, people are digging it um, or not digging it. I don't care. People are talking about it. That's one thing we've learned in web three. Awareness is so important. Um, so yeah, I mean, and so many great builders, so many great founders, so many great collectors, so many great developers, community members. And I know that we don't have enough and I know that it's very hard and all this kind of stuff, but people are here. Stuff is happening. I look at the people listening live 
and I can just start picking out people that are either getting ready to launch a project, working on a project, um, are thriving. Just is just good to see meme coins, utility coins, enterprise, retail, whatever it is. It's like it's like the you know Charles, the president of Hedera, right? It's like he says, it's like you're working top down enterprise, working bottom up retail, meet in the middle. The common theme here is like, can we, um, you know, get to that shared world vision that Lehman has? Can we all get on the same page? Um, can we not feel so separated? Um, I see good things. And I see opportunities to learn. I see problems to solve. It's a dynamic spot. I'm not leaving. I can't yell. I can't yell. My wife's sleeping, but I would do the Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio yell right now. Uh, but anyways, good stuff. Key takeaways today. And, and again, a huge shout out for Warlock for coming up to chat. Um, I would say key takeaways here are just... Double down on winners. Um, again, we're coming out of a bear market. People are spread a little thin and there are some gems and straight up winners in this space. And now's the time to double down on those folks because, um, you know, we got to supercharge this ecosystem and we don't have time to spend pushing products or projects that just don't got the juice right? What do they bring to the ecosystem? What value are they bringing? You know, it's like they, we just, we don't have time. There's so much great stuff out there. Um, and so many great people out there that are just killing it. Double down, triple down, quadruple down. Um, because that starts a, that starts an energy. Um, cause, cause we just need more as well. You know, we need more bridges. We need more liquidity. We need more of this, more of that, more of that. Um, but I think it just starts with getting focused, doubling down on good stuff. There's so much good stuff out there in the ecosystem. Check in on projects. If you got a project that you know um, that's been in here for a while, check in on them. What's going on? What's new? You know, because it's it's really unfortunate to see projects that have been here for a long time fall off. You know, so what can we do to you know not have that happen? The bull market's almost here. It would suck to have someone drop off right now. Um, so let's stick together. Let's focus on value. Um, and don't worry about those flies out there. Don't worry about those folks out there. They're going to, they're going to dwindle in numbers. We will defeat you. We will defeat you. Um, and with that, appreciate everybody. Um, this has been a very, very interesting, enlightening episode. Um, we're going to have some fresh vibes with the show i'm looking forward to some stuff it's going to be very good um also appreciate everyone sharing the pet photos i think we all needed that share your pet photos the threads pinned to the top it's the most important thing happening right now to be honest um and with that hello future goodbye past take care everybody positive vibes only let's go Thanks for listening to the Hashgraph Enthusiast Show, hosted by Brandon Davenport. Listen to past episodes and support the show at itsbrandond.com slash hbar.